Cool. Well, good to see you guys. Glad you are here. I guess you are excited to learn something, something new. Um, yeah, cool. So uh, today we're kind of going to learn or, yeah, and then learn and practice a little bit of like um, one of the basics of uh, mixing. Well, one of the important principles of like mixing, which is um, like with, you know, space on a mix, right? And that stuff can be accomplished by using panning, effects, um, just even just simple as leveling, um, or like even a tonality um, on your mix. Now, the cool thing, I just tried to put you on headphones so that you can actually hear the detail on the reverbs and which is, you know, like, it's really hard to hear in here, especially because, um, well, I need to make, make it really loud so you can hear it, but, you know, you can just set up your own volume. I put a little bit of sub so you can feel a little bit. It's not just flat, so it's cool. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions or everything, well, I'm going to try to go as slow as I can. Um, so, yeah, this recording, it's one of the recordings we did in, on tour. Um, just straight from the from the SD rack, and then I just go into the interface, into the uh, SC48. Um, I have a, at the moment, I have a snapshot of just balancing a mix. And it's pretty, pretty much um, like no EQ, no panning, just levels. And, you know, you'll be surprised when I recall a different snapshot, which has a full mix, it just changes your, your mind. And actually, we are lucky that we live in this this um, era of like panning, stereo left, right, because before there was just mono, right? <laughs> and then one or two left, center, right, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm nervous, you guys. It's just the, it's just the white headphones. Yeah, I'm not used to it. Um, yeah, cool. So, um, yeah, okay, let's have a listen. I'm just going to turn this down a little bit. I'm um, going to play something. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Hold on, one sec. Cool, so that's all mine now. Have a listen. Where's the keyboard? <laughs> So yes, yeah, this sounds not cool. <laughs> it just sounds really bad. <laughs> like you see how like um, all the keyboards, like as soon as I put the mono, there is some, like they are already out of phase because there is nothing in the middle. So that's really important. You know, people when do tracks, for example, um, they decide sometimes they found these plugins called like the width plugin, right? And then they just crank the width, but they never put their mixes in mono. So when they put in mono, all the middle middle section disappears because the sides are canceling the middle. Which is cool when you have a full left right. But when you are actually listening in mono, it's like 
really bad. So imagine if you guys are engineers, like monitor engineers, if you have a monopax, you know, so you just need to be aware on, like when you do, you send the keyboard, maybe it's not worth it to send the keyboard the full left, right, because it's canceling. It's just causing more damage. So sometimes it's just better to just to send the left side or the right side of it. Um, yeah, so le actually let's just have a listen to how it sounds. Um, just a full mix. By the way, I just didn't have, I just did it in five minutes, so. As you see here, everything is just like. It's cool. Cool. So it's a big difference. I'm just gonna now. I'm gonna kind of jump around between uh, flat and then full mix and have a listen to. It. That's no EQ or anything. That's with EQ. No EQ. And flat. EQ. No EQ. EQ. Cool. So that's cool, right? Like left, right, mono is not cool. <laughs> But sometimes there's times where you will need to learn how to mix on mono. And a good example, for example, um, there, is, there, there were times where, um, you know, for example, front house engineers, you're never gonna, you're probably half of the time you're going to be sitting in the middle, right? You're, sometimes you're going to have left, right, but sometimes you're going to be like just one, one, ha one hang, and then you just got to mix around that hang. Um, so that's, for example, front house, you guys re need to be really aware on how much stuff you are panning, because if you pan just too hard, then the person on the other side won't hear the other guitar. You know, the same thing with the um, the the monitor engineers, and I found this a lot that, um, you know, they just use one microphone, they just pan it, hard pan it. But sometimes that that's unrealistic when it comes to, because what you're trying to do in an in-ear mix is actually provide a 3D, mix, correct, of what's happening on stage. But sometimes having just one guitar on one side, then it creates like a fake stereo image, which just sounds unrealistic. So, you know, I'm gonna help you guys to find a little bit of a um, few techniques you can apply when your mixes. Um, a good example, like, let's just go to the guitar and something I did, and it's actually really cool, and you can apply it pretty much all the time. Um, so let's just go on my guitar, right? Let me mute the rest. Okay, I'm just gonna put the the guitars in the center. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna have a listen to the guitars.
So at the moment, I'm just playing with the face. Remember we talked about this face? So I put them in the center, and then just pressing face, right? So that's with one of the mics is out of face. It's kind of warmer, but then the mid-range disappears. When I press the face, it just all comes out. So that's one good example how to start, right? Like, well, the face is the right, that's the right way. Um, cool, and then let's just, let's just say, oh, it's just one guitar, let's just do hard left, right, you know? So. Cool, so you see now he, um, he was using uh, two amplifiers. So by using two amplifiers, there's already some delay between those amplifiers. And then he has a pedal board that, you know, already there's two outputs, that, and those outputs are never gonna be in time. Like it's really hard to get those in time. So that's why it sounds already stereo, because there is always one speaker is gonna be delayed than the other one. That's just, you know, normal. Um, but then once you, if you wanted to get the um, the guitars wider, you can apply delay to one of the guitars. Uh, there's something called Hass Effect. Usually Hass Effect is applying um, delay to the same signal, sorry, to one, si one of the signal is from zero to 15 milliseconds. So that's kind of like the range of the Hass Effect. And what you're trying to do is making sure your ear can hear by applying delay in one side. Um, it just creates the direction where, like, where your your center is gonna hear. So, for, by the time you delay this side, for example, let's just delay the left side. If you delay that one, your perception of the guitar is gonna be in the right side, right? Because the the right side that's the first guitar you're gonna be hearing. So then that already creates a stereo image. Now, let's just listen to, you know, like. You know, if, if you're a monitor guy and decide to do that. You see, it's just fake. It just sounds one side. It's not cool. But what if you do something like that? Just even just a little bit. That's... That makes it more like... So here, that sounds fake. That doesn't sound. So I'm gonna start with the fader down. And then slowly bring it. It's like you see how everything start getting to the center. So that's you know. Um, not all the time you need to pan left, right, and then have one on on your on your mixes, right? You can just do by by just volume, or if you just have one guitar, you can just delay one. Let's just try this one. Let's just use the um, the has effect, right? Um, in this case, I'm just gonna delay one of the guitars. I'm just gonna choose guitar one B by eight mils, nine mils. That's in, off. It's like, it's like crazy wide, which is cool. It sounds cool. Now that technique is something you can do. For example, let's just say, oh, you know, extension service. We just have one microphone and one amp, and that's it. Well, you can just repatch one and put delay in the other one, and it already sounds, you know, stereo, and sounds cool. So, and then of course the the musician is gonna feel co comfortable with that. Of course, I usually try to. Um, you know, to play around, you can try it with three meals. I don't know, let's just try it, have a listen to it. Let's just start with zero and then slowly, um, slowly add delay to it. 
Look at that, this is already two meals and already changed crazy. Like two meals is like <laughs> distance this much. Oh, it's changing crazy. So that's unrealistic, like that's too much, I reckon. Actually, like four. I think four sounds cool. Then better than nine, I reckon. Let's just try nine. I think nine is too wide. I think four feels better. Cool. Does that make sense? So that's one of the. Um, the techniques you can use, apply delay to one of the um, the microphones. Do you have any questions? Oh, feel free. Oh. Um, sometimes, like, I've tried this, but then the guitarist, it does sound usually heavier on one side, and sometimes they're okay with it, but sometimes they're not. Would you try to compensate by, like, bringing the other side up more in volume? Yeah, yeah. So I, I will compensate the same thing. Because, you know, by when you delay one, then your per perception of the sound is going to be shift. So then I always try to bring, let's just do that. So there you go. So that's the same level. You see, that's better. That same level, compensating. So you see, yeah, that's a good thing. Uh, yeah, if you do that, just put it on the um, compensate. Um, but yeah, play with the music, you know, let the, the musician, you know, if, put it on to ask him, hey, do you like that? Is it comfortable for your ears? Um, for those who do, do broadcast and, you know, um, front of house, you know, list something, listen to, just play with the delay and broadcast. They need to be aware of listening stuff in mono because people are going to be listening on your TV speakers on, on mono, you know? So, you know, you need to be listening mono. Pretty much like <laughs> broadcast needs to be listening like a hundred, like probably 80% of their time in mono to get the mix right. Um, cool. So that's a good example, you know, of like, um, you know, space and the mix, how you can just use those techniques. And that's, you know, panning and delays is great. Like you can do awesome stuff. Um, cool, let's just try, I don't know, let's just have a listen to a keyboard. What happens to... So that's mono. Mono and then stereo. Cool. So you hear like a big difference. Of course, keyboards when they're not stereo, they don't sound that cool. Um, but it's great, you know. Like I, you know, it's awesome having the ability to just to just left right on keyboards and go super wide. The same thing. We need to be aware, of broadcast guys. Listening to mono, make sure your mixes are not just like drums and bass and that's it. Because when you put mono, it's like, and if you are panning everything, there is nothing in the middle. So if you if you make your mix right in mono, if you can hear the guitars, the keyboards, everything, when it's uh, stereo, it's going to be like, whoa, like crazy. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, keyboards, like the same thing. If you guys are into the recording stuff, um, sometimes you don't need to use a, a, like a stereo keyboard. You can just make it mono and then just pan it around. So let's just try it. So let's just make it mono, right? So 
Well, it's even cool. That's cool. It's not too bad. Even you can play just with the panning, you know, in a stereo. But yeah, that's a good example. Um, cool. Is, does that make sense? Any questions so far? All good? Excellent. Great. Um, you know, the same thing with, like, let's just go to drums, right? Yeah, so, so if you, now, of course, panning, it all depends. If you are a monitor engineer, you need to do the panning of the drummer, right? Because if you do it backwards, he's gonna, he's gonna be like, I'm hitting the, cr the crash, and he's like, in that side. <laughs> so that's, you know, a good, a lot of people forget this, you know, always ask the drummer, hey, can you just check your overheads, make sure they're in the right spot? Because a lot of people get confused with stage right, stage left on the overheads. I do, I, I get confused sometimes. Um, so that's why I like I try to ask the um, the drummer just go and check, you know. Um, yeah, but then for example, there's uh, options where like broadcast, for example, is actually the opposite because you know the the viewer it's watching a screen, so it's backwards flipped. So you gotta do everything flipped um, accordingly to what you're watching. Um, if you are doing an album, like you know, let's just a studio album, that all depends on to your own creativity. You know, you can decide, oh, I wanna be on the perspective of the singer or I wanna be like in front of the singer and I'm just, what I'm seeing. There is no like rules when it comes to that. It's up to uh, your own, um, you choose. Um, cool, so let's just have a listen to our, uh, overheads. So you can hear the hats this side. Let's just make it less wide. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, I like them. I like the overheads wide, so it's up to each person that that but yeah, I like super wide. <laughs> So this is how listen with just flat how it sounds. You pick up so much sub on it. Like I'm keen here the bass cap. So let's just start with a high pass filter. Cool. You can go a little more. I don't want to take too much of the body of the symbols. Um, we still have a little bit of like in the mid range, in the middle, it's like the snare is getting a little bit. It's crazy how much room you get into it. Listen to the snare. Maybe I'll split the difference in that. I'll take. I add all. I try to add um at the top end in there, just really like crisp on top. So sometimes don't be afraid to go like 11, 15K on your overheads. Something that's, you know, um, stuff that it's wide. And if you are a Libre Sparkle, it helps your mixes to go wider. So something I try to, in my mind, when I'm mixing is like, if I want to do something like left, right pan, I try to make them brighter so it feels like huge. And if it's like a base or something that is going to be in the middle, I'll try to make it darker. So that it's darker and then brighter in your ears. So you, it definitely creates more space in your mix. 
So yeah, it's a big difference how the overheads with EQ and everything is out. So that's the snare and the snare flat. Um, maybe I wouldn't put that much on it on like studio stuff or like on in ears, but I just like it on the PA when it's huge, it's smacking the face. Same thing, I wouldn't put that much of that on the studio. But it feels good in a PA. Uh, let's have a listen to just the kick in flat. Same thing. Some adding gates on the drums. You can just leave them off, but then. Let's just say you have a drum sub, and if you leave that, then you can, you're gonna feed back, and then you still hear the bass. You can hear the bass is really clear. You hear the snare coming out. Like a good example in this drum kit, this you hear a lot of the snare bottom coming through the kick in. So sometimes it's good to get it. <laughs> this is the snare bottom. It's all there. But when I put a gate, you know, I do the same thing, kick. It's a little bit tighter. So that makes sense so far. It's pretty cool. A little bit like deconstructing a mix. Um, something, for example, I don't know. You hear that that ring? Now, don't be afraid. Rings are not bad. Rings are sometimes really good because it makes the tone like it helps to get the tone on the mix. So if you try to get a, a really dry snare like with no overtones, I guarantee in, in the full mix it's not gonna sound good. Um, so, you know, sometimes it's good to have overtones on a snare. Yeah, sounds cool. The same thing, overtones when it comes to like toms, for example. If you are a front of house engineer, don't be afraid to leave, you know, when you play doom and this, that thing stays there for a while. Don't be afraid to leave that in because understand when you are sound checking, the room is, is empty and if you make if you take that overtone when the people comes in then your toms are going to sound like really thin so you always need to compensate think about ahead of like when you have people in the room how you're going to compensate that the same thing with, when you're a monitor you need to understand like maybe you don't need to take it like you leave it flat take a little bit of the mid um cool um in this case i don't put hats on it because i already i'm getting a lot of hats already from the overheads so sometimes like you don't need to use hats but sometimes you can if you want to but let's have a listen to the hats um so that's flat um So his hats are really dark, right? So maybe just go a little bit on. Just take a little of that kick out of it. I still hear the hats. This is a plow of EQ. Cool. I think that's better. And now let's just turn the um the, the overheads and let's just add the the, the hats with it. Now, listen to the, the overheads. When you listen to the hats, where are they sitting? Like, in, like for example, is that at 10, 10 o'clock, at 9, 11? 
9.30? 10? Yeah, 10. Let's just say 10. Okay, now let's just try to just do the same with the hats. I'm gonna add the hats slowly. Just to support the overheads. Off. In. Two. Off. In. Just a little bit. So, you know, that's a good example how we put the uh, the hats with the overheads thinking on, you know, perspective of the overheads. So you, the same thing you do with the toms with the overheads and make sure they are in the right. Sometimes the same thing, when you go too hard on the, on the toms, you have a 18 inch tom, right? Now, if you put that too far from your ear, then it's just all the lows are just gonna get concentrated on one side. So maybe, for that, you might need to just put it a little bit more to, to the center and then just go through that. Because, if yeah, if you're too too wide with the lows, and it's, it's going to affect your mix too. Um, cool. Everyone so, good so far? Any questions? Any, any kind of question? I guess good? Yeah, uh, maybe we can take that in the next next class because that yeah gates are different, um, a little more extensive. Um, but yeah, um, cool. So once you're, we're done with that, um, now let's just talk about a little bit of how can if effects can set your instrument on on space, like on uh, creating a space on your ears when you have in ears and or like you know, your headphones, um, stuff like that. So let's just have a listen to. This is, that's a snare, snare reverb that I put on a full kit. That's no effects on drum kit. That's on the snare. That's how in the drum, whole drum kit. Now I try to do um, two kind of effects on the drums, right? Um, there's like multiple purposes why one that. One I do, for example, one in the snare. Uh, the way I do it is because I want to make sure the snare sounds even fatter. It already sounds fat by itself, but then reverb, like reverb, a small reverb, a short reverb, it will make your snare sound bigger. Now, um, you know, we're talking about like, um, like really short, like 0.6 seconds of um, decay. That means if you're, let's just say, um, you're in a small room, like, like kind of like the green room here, right? It's like probably if you clap, that's kind of like the reverb you're gonna get. So really small. Now, I'm applying delay into that reverb. The reason why is that, because um, if you apply reverb to effect just without delay, what you're doing is kind of syncing the instrument to the mix, like, in, like kind of like if you stand back, right? from a mix, but what I'm trying to do by applying delay is it's make it bigger, but it's still creating the, the, the tail out of that snare. So I'm just giving like the depth, but still really present in front of you. You know, it's not getting synced. Does that make sense? So let's just, um, I'm gonna show you just, um, like just the snare with that reverb.
So I, for this one, I use the uh, true verb. Okay, so you can copy my preset. It's pretty awesome. So there is usually in your reverbs are gonna you're gonna find something called pre-delay. So that's pretty much the delay on the reverb. So it's gonna start like adding the the pre-delay is the delay you're gonna have like by the time it hits, you're gonna slow you, you, does that make sense? Um so yeah, let's just have a listen with we know pre-delay and see what happens. Let's just start adding pretty late. It's like kind of flaming, but it's adding, it's getting fat. It's just making the snare fatter. But let's just go to an extreme. Let's just add more, more. Delay. doing that something's cool could work you can go even more if you want maybe you might used to drop it in volume I don't know nothing that sounds pretty cool Uh, but let's just. I like it at, I think it's 80. feel like now the snare without the reverb just doesn't sound the same. <laughs> it's like boring, but now it's like, oh, it's cool. So like you could even put reverb, if you're a monitor guy, don't be afraid of putting reverb. You just gotta get them right. Because if, if you create the sounds unrealistic, like let's just say if you play a massive, usually this is what happens. <laughs> Engineers just go load a preset and they don't know the settings, right? Usually, like you have pre delay, you have uh, decay on that stuff. Now, if your decay is more than 2.5 mil uh, seconds, then that's too much. Let's just put, like, let's just say, how, what happens if I put a delay on the snare? Like um, decay, for example. Um, where is it? Here. That's a 0.8 of a second. Let's just <laughs> let's go. That's what happens usually, a new engineer put a reverb and put that in the drummer and the drummer hates it. So, just, yeah. Cool. So you see, you know, the shorter, I think sometimes it's better shorter. Um, so for drums, for a snare, I try to go like from 0.6 to 0.8 of a second on, re on reverb. And then um, that's just for the snare. And then just to keep it a little more depth, like let's just say I'm playing in a bigger room, I just put like 1.8 of a second just to get like a thicker, even like the tail of the drum, uh, which that's what I'm going to do right now. So that's... So that's a bigger, that's a longer uh, reverb, so let's just say it. So, yeah, so that's one point. You know, you you find always your pre-delay, your time of the, how long is your, gonna be your reverb. You can play with the size.
just remember, don't make it unrealistic because the drummers are, or like it's good, people are gonna hate it. So that's cool. Like that snare sounds already cool, but let's just add both rivers. Now remember, by just listening just now, it's it sounds too much right now. But remember, you're just listening by itself. When you put it with the mix, it's just different context. Um, that's another thing. You know, when you are mixing, don't just EQ when you are soloing, or don't don't put compression when you are soloing, or like don't put don't mess around with the reverse when you're just, you know, snare and reverb because you're not seeing the big picture. Some of you gotta be the whole picture. So let's just, let's just move those uh, reverbs and then just add the whole mix. I'm gonna add the reverb slowly. Their first one, the snare reverb. You just add depth. And then the other one. Cool. So you see, it's a good example. Now, if I, if let's just say I, I left the reverse that, and I'm gonna mute the rest of the band. I'm just gonna leave the drums. Now it feels like oh, it's too much reverb, but it's not because when you turn on the band, it's part of it. Cool. So always. You know, mix your reverbs with in the whole context of the um, of the music. Um, yeah. Any questions so far? Yeah. Did you use this part in, in your front house? Is, is this how you is this? Are you mixing like your front house? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would definitely if I play that. Um, Yeah, well, yeah, it all depends on the room. Yeah, exactly. If it's a hub, I wouldn't worry about it too much because I already struggle to get the room out of my mix, right? Yeah. But if it's like CC, I can play with it. If it's this room, you have more, like, tons of freedom to play with the reverbs. Now, of course, if you go to the extreme where you put the uh, four-second four second reverb, it just sounds fake. It's like, it doesn't sound real. You know, it's a smaller room. You just got to get the right settings for the room. Um, same thing, maybe I'll, maybe you can put a little reverb on your ambience mics. Because, like, let's just la listen to the amb my ambience mics here. Um, that's my ambience mic. Just drive. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of reverb. I'm just gonna, I think it's, I have a Vox reverb, so let's just that. that's the one. That's not reverb. Reverb. It sounds wider. Yeah, you know, so you can play with that. Um, oh yes, out of ten, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So you know, if you're a money guy, feel free to put a little bit of reverb on your ambience. Try it. You know, just just really gentle, like you really in there. Don't don't make every, like everything. Like I think mixing it's all everything by like slow like small detail, small, you know, increments, yeah, exactly. Because if you do crazy increments, like 5 dB, it's just, whoa, just crazy. Um, so, yeah, so that makes sense.
you know, like hopefully hopefully this is helping you guys. Um, let's just see if I have. Uh, oh, trust. That's on. That's cool. So that's no effects. It's really dry. Um, yeah, so you just play with the effects, it's pretty cool. I definitely it will change your mixes and um, yeah, everything you do is gonna be like, yeah. But now you just gotta try it, find the time to try it, mess around with the settings. Don't Don't just load presets. You know, get learn how to, you know, know the plugin, know the, you know, the unit, whatever you're using. Um, yeah. So the same thing with the vocals. Let's just load. Uh, mid, mid vocal. The power of your presence fills my soul. Jesus, I will trust you. I will trust you. Jeez, those S's are crazy. I know you never fail. I will trust you. That's Jesus, no effects. Jesus, I will trust you. I will trust you. I know you never fail. I will trust you. No effects. Effects. It's a little bit. Um, yeah, same thing with vocals. You can go to like 2.2 to 3 seconds. If you go like to 4, it's the same thing, to extreme. You know, if you're if you're an arena, like if you are doing broadcast, then maybe you can put it on. But then if you are like CC, CC is like usually one point eight two seconds. Um, you know, this room will be, what is it, one second, one point two. Um, yeah. So just play with those settings. Uh, the same thing. Play with the pre delay on the reverb of the vocals because if you if you leave the pre delay at zero, then when you put the the reverb on. What you are doing is just syncing the vocal on the mix, but if you put a like let's say a, f a forty millisecond, forty milliseconds on the pre delay on the reverb, then your vocal is still at the front, but there is still like texture around it, so it's pretty cool. Cool. Any other questions? How do I approach EQ in my effects returns? So yeah, the same thing. I tried. Uh, I treat it as a um, input channel. A good example, like um, you know, the snare reverb.
So that's my snare. Reverb. And I'm just going to bypass the EQ. Just get, get a little bit thick on the low mid because I'm already adding low mid on the snare top. So yeah, I just treat, a, a, treat it as an um, uh, input channel, but then same thing. I don't try to over EQ that. Just more like if I want a little more of that like wooden sound, then I just add a little bit of that, you know, that top end here. Um, you know, then just take a little bit of that. Same thing, another thing that people forget is that people just put reverb on the snare or toms, but what about the cymbals, right? Cymbals, hats, kick drum, you know? It it makes it makes sense that you put, you know, let's just put, I'm gonna, Listen carefully to the reverb on the kick drum. That's in, off. In, off. In. You know, it's like you put it on a room, like it's part of it. So if you're gonna do something to the snare, putting it like on a snare reverb, Put the whole drum kit because you gotta make sure everything is working together, everything is gluing together. Because if you start doing like a massive snare tail on the snare bottom, then your whole drum kit is out of place. It's like the snare doesn't belong to that drum kit. So it's really important when you are putting reverbs, think about those, all the reverbs, all the instruments need to work with the same reverbs. Uh, or sometimes, like what you need to do in your whole mix, uh, you create like a um, uh, reverb, a glue, glue reverb, and add, you know, guitars, bass, everything, just a little bit, so that at least this is a good, like something I will do in the studio, is like um, create get that reverb and add pretty much all the instruments, so that I can create like a a full like a, kind of I'm grabbing all the instruments, putting them into a room, and then they belong part like in the same room instead of just adding a massive tail here, another tail here, and then it all just doesn't work together. Um, so sometimes it's important to do that. Um, yeah, so pretty much that's, you know, reverbs are really important to create space in the mix. You know, it's pretty fun when you get to know them. And then there's another tools like, um, like choruses or like doublers where you can put them in the vocals and they sound like they create even more space. But I wouldn't do it on the in-ears. I will try to... I'll do it in the studio or live, like from the house or broadcast. Like, let's have a listen to um, a vocal with a doubler. The unknown, the power of your presence That's the sound of it. Just sounds wider. Jesus, I will trust you. I will trust you. Sounds sweet. Sounds I know you never off. Fail. I will trust you. Jesus, I will trust you. I will trust you. These S's are piercing. I know you never fail. I will trust you. <laughs> You monitor guys, I don't know you get how you guys can do it. Like, uh, you guys don't put DSRs on it. <laughs> He's like, front of house, I just put so much DSR on it. I don't, I didn't have time to set it up, but yeah. It's like that, every single letter is like, ugh, crazy. And when you're listening at five, it's just brutal. I'll never be or like singers that have their vocal like way up here, and it's like no band, it's just hearing just vocal. It's like, <laughs> But yeah, so you know that's a that's a doubler. You know, you can make a, a, a chorus sound like that too. The power of your presence fills my soul. Jesus, I will trust you. I will trust you.
I'm gonna meet the doubler. In. Sounds good. Ah, no, that's my my settings. I'm just joking. Uh, settings for the doubler. Um, yeah, here. If you go too much out of detune, it sounds just really funny. But yeah, the same thing. As my always, my startup is that Pensado's doubler. Sounds awesome. I just gotta make sure you take that off the the direct one. Um, sounds cool. Cool. Um, yeah. Are you guys happy? Cool. Any questions? I think we should just ah oh all the time. Yeah, that's put in guitars, put in backing vocals, put in tracks, everything. It sounds awesome. <laughs>